Cassius and Desiree still aboard, we decided that we would leave Annapolis and head out the Severn and go up the Chesapeake Bay a little bit to the Magathy River to a little island called Dobbins Island, sometimes referred to as Dutch Ship Island, near Gibson Island. We had been there once before, avoiding a storm with our friend Vicky, and it was a really great trip. We got to pass by a bunch of Navy vessels, which Cassius found really exciting, and we also were able to motor sail underneath the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, also another delightful scene. The water was really calm, and it was a great opportunity for Cassius to have his first try at steering the sailing vessel bare. Actually did a really good job. We uh, taught him how to sail by um, using compass and as you can see here sometimes he didn't even need to use his hands. He kept his eye really well on the compass and kept us on a pretty straight course and so we let him enjoy it for a little while. We were in no rush. When we arrived Jeff was really eager to do some cleaning because we were getting a mustache on the side of the boat. And as you can see, Cassius was really eager to help. We could hardly keep him out of the water. When we went back to Annapolis, we decided to take Cassius on a pirate adventure. Over in Eastport, you can go to uh, the pirate ship and get aboard with your kids and just have a real adventure with water cannons and pirate booty and all sorts of crazy adventures out on the water. He really loved it. He got to get all dressed up, he got to shoot a pirate off of a little boat that came up and tried to take over the vessel, and even the adults had a good time. They really did a great job, and I highly recommend this for anybody with kids. After that, we decided to head over to the Naval Academy. Uh, having been in Annapolis a bunch of times, Jeff and I hadn't taken the opportunity to really check the place out, and we decided that we would try to check out the chapel. Um, which we thought had a really interesting history. Um, the chapel was built in the first decade of the 20th century, and it used to be used to hold uh, all of the compulsory chapel for all of the Naval Academy uh, midshipmen. And that was until 1972. Um, it's a really beautiful chapel with a big cupola uh, topped with copper, a um, beautiful halo of lights and beautiful stained glass windows throughout it. You may recognize the exterior dome of it from the U.S. postage stamp from 1995. But I think one of the most interesting elements of the entire chapel is actually what's underneath it, and that's what we were most eager to see. Uh, this footage here, you can see there's a vessel um, on the very back wall of the chapel, and this is the little tour group that was there while we were walking through. They have a beautiful organ there as well. So what we were really there to see was down in the basement, and this was um, John Paul Jones's tomb. And John Paul Jones was uh, a Scottish-American sailor, you know, sometimes known as the American uh, Revolutionary Father of uh, the Navy. Um, anyways, he died in Paris in 1790, and he was... Um, brought back to the United States in the uh, beginning of the 20th century, and he was buried um, in this beautiful bronze and marble sarcophagus, which is under the chapel. After that, we went to the museum, and I got to uh, learn a little bit about some of my relatives. You can see here, um, I was checking out what uh, one of the Lejeune family members did in the past as part of the Marines. And then we went upstairs to check out these awesome... Um, ship replicas. Um, these models were made out of bone and ivory and wood and were just so intricate and beautiful. There's also military uniforms and weapons and all sorts of things like that that we also enjoyed seeing. I highly recommend checking out the Naval Academy if you are in Annapolis. Mm -hmm.